Hello everybody and welcome back to the labs. I am Tausty and thank you for joining me here on another episode of Resonant Rise. Hanging out here on the mech station server all by myself right now. Uh, but that's okay. I just did a quick server reboot here and uh, updated the pack a little bit. So we have some new stuff to play around with. Uh, well, I mean, not really new stuff per se, like it's actually been on the server the whole time, but something I, I do want to work on. But before I do, I actually haven't even walked around my base yet, so things are going to be a little funky loading in. Um, last night, I was hanging out a bit playing, working on a couple things, and I'm wondering if it finished. It did not. Very interesting. Why would it not have finished? Because somehow I miscalculated the amount of redstone it needed. No. Of something. What are you stuck on? Let's just cancel this. I wanted to put some ludicrite into my reactor to see what it would do. And so that may be on the docket for today. Um, Ludicrite is a little, it's kind of an interesting idea. Why is there 32 of those bad boys? Like, did that just finish? There we go. Something weird happened with the recipes. I'm going to have to check those out. But uh, Ender.io, and this isn't something that we did in the pack. Ender.io has added um, a way of making both Enderium and Signalum in the alloy smelter. So you need the Enderium base, Pyrothium, and Enderpearls to make Enderium. And the Enderium base is platinum, silver, and tin. So it's actually like, you know, the same materials, just different ways of doing that. And we have a lot of shiny right now because of my magical crop farm that I decided to cook up for this. And then Signalum is also very easy. It's redstone, silver, and tin as well in an alloy smelter. So that is what is needed for us to start working towards Ludicrite to see what we can do with that. I wanted to make um, a couple of changes here to our checklist. We haven't really done anything with this in a while. And I'd like to do more of it. Uh, it's kind of annoying to delete all this stuff. So I'm going to have to make that a better system next time. So here we go. What I'd like to say is um, instead of working on repairing our armor all the time, I'm going to do this. Uh, let's look into power suits. All right, so that's the modular power suits mod. I want to look into see how buggy that is, if it is functional at all. I know it is rather buggy in general but if the recipes work properly and i can get this, the armor to work i might go with that um i would like to what's the other big thing i wanted to do oh yeah rf tools relook which is what we're going to work on today along with um new farms and what was the other one there's something else that I really wanted to look at. And as soon as I remember it, we'll throw that on the to-do list as well. Um, and I think I'm going to make a wall out of these to-do list things eventually. So you can see here I've reworked my AE system a little bit, which means I've had to build quartz up in this window. So I might do that all the way around on this level. Um, basically, to add this alloy smelter and this additional interface, I needed an extra channel and I broke my AE system. That's what the other one was. Um, a lot to do it and now rework AE network so I have a plan to redo that so that's coming up in the future but yeah we've uh, we've got done a lot and with our enderman ooh, I forgot how easy that was to break with our enderman farm um, just plugging away over there. We have 14,000 dimlets. So, I need a dimlet. 
I need an export bus with some acceleration cards. Which just reminded me of something. I need to pick this up. I was working on this earlier. Okay. And we need to go grab us our research station. All right, currently not infused at all. That's fine. Now, my understanding is the mod author is saying that this is now a functionable task that I would like to do. So we've got uh, a bad placement of that, actually. I want this up against that cable. And I would like to see what would happen if I do this. Boom, it works. Perfect. So we'll give that some acceleration. Look at that. And then we'll grab our import bus from over here. And I'd like to start processing through these. Come on, pull it out. Yes, there we go. Perfect. I'd like to start processing through all these different um, dimlets that we have. Now, I know that you do need some for crafting, but I should be okay if I ever run out. We're going to have to look at some storage options in a few minutes as well. Also, <laughs> these are cobblestone. Don't know what has turned them into that. Um, yeah, that was strange. <laughs> So that will start the process through and eventually we're going to make us look at all of my covers are all jacked up. What on earth? What is going on here? I have been having some interesting texture problems lately. Um, the other day, all of my beacons turned black, which was actually really cool, but not really that helpful. Um, and I, it like client restart is what changes them. So very bizarre, very bizarre. All right. So we're going to start processing through these really quickly and start looking at while that works. Let's look into power suits, shall we? So modular power suits, modular power suits is in this pack. And I've tried this before in 1710 and it worked out to be very, very, very buggy. But we're gonna give it a shot either way. Modular power suits. All right, and we're gonna turn our sink off and just leave it like this for a second. So the first thing I'm gonna need is lots and lots and lots and lots of wiring. Probably a couple stacks at least. Jump to do, do, do. All right. Head. Chest. Thing. <laughs> Where are the legs? Did I miss the legs? I did miss the legs. Boom. There's all four. Now, the next thing we are going to need for sure. I mean, the first really thing I want from this is step up a bit of speed increase when I'm walking and running and shielding. So, oh, and night vision options for sure. What we're going to need is uh, force field emitters. We're going to need these batteries, though. So the HV capacitors are really not that expensive for some reason. Is that... I like to put these in each piece and then really only power the boots to be really high powered. Um, and this will actually receive a charge from our wireless charger. So that's really cool. Um, now the shield emitters, I believe are what we're going to need. Let's just take a stack of these out of the solenoids because they're also used in a lot of the different recipes. Um, and we're obviously going to need more wire already, but that's okay. So the shield emitters are what I'm thinking I'm going to need at least four of, I think eight, to be honest. Yeah, I need eight. I can't believe how much of this I remember. 
All right. This is a much cheaper recipe in my opinion, but I don't always have the gold nuggets available and I don't use copper and silver for very much, so who cares? All right, I need another half stack of stolen noids at least. Okay, and how many more? I need three more shield emitters. One, two, three. Perfect. So you install a shield emitter and you give it full strength. And the nice thing about doing it this way is it doesn't add a lot of weight. Uh, the plates are effective armor, but they also add a whole heap ton of weight. All right, so night vision is a control circuit and a hologram em emitter. Control circuit. Needs some cactus, I believe. Oh, no, let's do this way. And a hologram emitter. I need some glass. I don't have a reception coil in there for sure. A few more of these bad boys. So blue, green, and red. Well, basically, um, I know I have blue. I guess here's some red. And I will also need some cactus probably because I think I used all that the other day for another little project that didn't work very well. Okay. And that should give us our night vision options. Perfect. I guess we'll add the airtight seal. I've had to do... Um, I actually, I, ha I did have to go to the moon. I just had to teleport up there because we were having some lag issues and w w the cause was one of the uh, one of the guys had made a space station. It was a really cool looking space station, but he since left, left the server and the things that were running up there were starting to cause problems, so. Oh yeah, I gotta do this for sure. So let's make another hologram emitter. Oh, it's actually already there. And my gogs of revealing, I actually have, uh, we'll make these right here. So it's two thaw meters, some leather and some gold. I can manage that. Really? All right. To the tower. A thaw meter is, I'm, if I remember correctly, some shards. One, two, three, four, around some, oh no. Glass, no. Ah, I will have to look for it. Thaw meter. Ah, I knew there was some gold and some glass in there somewhere. Oops. Like this, and then we'll just get a few leather. Perfect. Go in here, throw this bad boy in there. That'll do. All right, I think we actually might be ready to put this on the way I want. And it's not everything, but it's a lot. All right, this is on by default, our night vision. So I'm going to go ahead and check the key binds out and change night vision to C. Now I know it's taken, but it's taken by my, my power suit armor. So I don't really need to worry about that. I have full shielding. 
That's awesome. I do move pretty slow, so we'll have to work on the servos and everything I need to increase my speed. So we'll do um, sprint assist is some servos. Uphill step assist is some servos. I don't need swim boost right now. Actually, I may add that as well. So basically a whole bunch of servos and our shock absorber. So the modular power suit servos are made like so. Blast. I do need about 16 of these, I think. Ugh. Let's try that. That should work. Eight and some wool. So shock absorbers first, that's key. You're gonna take away all damage. Uphill step assist, which we will also put on a key. Uh, jump assist, compensation, power, we'll try like there. Sprint assist, this is a big one. Compensation, power, walking assist will leave like here. Right? That's not bad. Any more and it would get really laggy, so that's okay. We'll go with that. Um, jump assist. That's pretty much perfect as well. And the only thing I need to do now, I think, is key binds. Like so. All right, and if we head over here, we can in fact see our node with our thaw meter stuff. So that worked really well. All right, I think that'll do it. That, um, oh dang, we are out of aura. We're gonna have to AFK over here for a little bit in order to charge it because our runic shielding isn't going up anymore. Uh, now that's not the plan right now, but while I'm, I might as well do my crafting over here because all of these are knocked out for some reason. What on earth is going on over here? Where do you get your channel from? Oh, that's a problem. That is a mighty big problem, actually. Um, we're going to have to move this over here, actually. Let me pick you up, pick you up, pick you up. Oh, not that. Need that to stay right where it is. So taking away those two channels, this should be able to power at least this one P2P, right? Yeah, we're good here. Oh, good. So I would like to get um, one of these guys, which is a couple of these, which I don't have any of the stuff for. Come on, wake up. Come on, crafting, do your thing. I hate it when it does this. There we, what? Really? All that processing for two? I actually timed everybody out the other day by pulling out too much stuff from my AE system at once. Um, when you do recipes with lots of items in them, they don't have to be different items, just lots of items. It And you pull them out while you're crafting them, it can be kind of problematic. All right. 
So the thrusters, I'll need these four. One, two. I hope I just need the one thruster. I know I need something else, but I don't know what else. Two servos, yeah, that's easy. Or solenoids is what it was. All right, so now our power suit is tricked out the way I want. I'm intentionally not doing the um, uh, I probably should do that actually. I'm intentionally not doing the flight on it. I don't need it. I like the flight of the flight ring. If I ever need to fly really fast for some reason, sure, I'll add it. But for now, I really, really don't need it. Let's look up some of this basic plating though. What is required for this? Tin gear. We're going to make a whole bunch of you. Actually, I just need four. <laughs> I did automate the creation of the the gears and the machine casings for applied energistics. Uh, thickness, we'll, we're going to add a good half thickness heat shielding to each piece and then step up our walking compensation a little bit. Still good to me. And that should help us with like lava and stuff like that. So we're actually gonna right click on this bad boy and throw these on there. Cause we won't be needing him anymore. Look at that, that's charged already. That's like the fastest I've ever seen that charged. So that's pretty crazy cool. Um, boy, yeah, wow. I'm like really surprised by that. So we've got some of our runic shielding is taken care of. Some of it's, we, you know, we're going to have to go AFK over there and recharge our batteries a little bit. Um, I would really like to find a way to automate the charging of that. I'm hoping that the next time the... I'm waiting on an update for AE2 because I want Thalamic Energistics to update so it's compatible. And he's working on a couple things, one of which may be a way to charge your bobbles. But yeah, I'd like to have that ring shielding back. Um, I am going to be pretty powerful right now, but I would like to have it back. I'm going to spend a bit of time tweaking the way that this armor looks because you can change how it looks. Um, and then we'll come back and work on the next project. Well, all right. I have tweaked it the way I want it. Basically, all I left is the wings. Um, so we can see here I got wings and I kind of tweaked out the colors to match my outfit. And the armor is still on, which is amazing. So, you know, I'm still wearing it. You can just, I finally get to show off my skin. Woo -woo. <laughs> I'm very proud of the skin. If you didn't know um, from my last series, I made this one day and just, I, I loved it. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, we've got our look in the modular power suits taken care of. So, that is a done. And our RF tools relook is functioning, but I will have to add this somewhere. Um... Why don't we actually just put it here? It's got to be somewhere with power, doesn't it? Let's just chuck it here for now. And then we'll take a few just Fluix cables. And just get it to ignore everything else here. Disabled, disabled. That's fine, actually. And we'll go ahead and throw our import bus back on the bottom here and boost it up. And we'll throw an export bus right here. Get ourselves one of our many dimlets. And boom, there we go, we're back to normal. So that will take care of that processing issue I had. So I've got these here I want to work with now. 
Um, I've got this redstone furnace as well. I'll probably end up putting somewhere. Um, because it is fully upgraded. It is a resonant redstone furnace with uh, full speed augmentations that I was using for something earlier. So let's head on down and talk about this ludicrite. So I don't really understand exactly how the ludicrite works. What I know is that it is like a block that they added to make for really effective rotors and things like that, I think. Uh, I remember when the changelog came out for it and that is similar to what I read, but I don't know for sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop these up actually. Now this is going to be really, really hard because I'm going to get teleported around a whole bunch. Um, but what I need to do is I'd like to actually, oh, shoot, I don't know. I might have to empty that whole thing and I have to do it quick. Let's just grab some buckets. I know I got some empty buckets. Let's see what happens. Huh. That wasn't really what I expected to see. All right, well, oh, oh shoot. <laughs> oh, and it gave me some ender plant seeds. That's hilarious. I can't actually reach down there. It's pretty deep. Well, this is going to suck. Uh, what I think I'll have to do is just... Oh, there's not like a happy way of doing this. I could pump it out, I guess. It's like it acts like water almost, which is not how it's intended to act, I don't think. Ugh. All right, guys, let me play with this for a little bit. That was the hardest thing I have ever done in Minecraft. <laughs> that was ridiculous. I even went into creative to see if the teleporting would stop affecting me. Um, that gravel does not collapse on it like you'd expect it to. Um, yeah, gravel doesn't... It. What? And there's a small bug where like... For example, here, um, you're not actually looking at the effects, like you're not standing in the block that it's affecting, you're just close to it, and because it's pouring out, that entire block will affect you. So, I mean, I don't, I guess I don't really know if that is a bug, but it feels like a bug. And this is where things are going to get difficult. Oh no, what did I break? I really hope I didn't break anything. Yeah, I did. Whew, at least it's just one. Sounded like more than one, but. So yeah, what would happen was I'd hit those blocks and I'd fall down and um, when I'd fall down, I'd come near another block. So like I'm flying, right? I'd touch the ground or I touched the, the fuel rod here and it would take, it would turn off my flight. And then I'd come I'd start to fall and I'd catch myself above because these flowing blocks technically 
can still teleport you for the the width of the entire block, I would just get thrown all over the place. So I've been doing this for quite a while, and I'm very happy to say I'm done. And I don't really care if this produces less power or more power. Uh, I'm not coming back in to remove this. No way. Make sure you build your reactors the way you want, because once they're in, that's it. Not worth fixing. Ever. Perfect. All right. Oh, no. How did I end up with an extra block? Great. All right, I'm going to have to go around the outside of the entire reactor and find out where my extra couple reactor casings came from and fix it. Well, I am pleased to say that after a very, 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 very long time, the reactor is back up and running and producing the exact same amount of RF per tick as it did before I started this project. And as you can see, I still have 29 Ludocrite box blocks in my inventory because it's not a valid metal inside of reactors. It's only four turbines. And I... I had a sinking suspicion that was going to be the case, but I wanted to give it a shot this way anyways because I wanted to be surprised if it worked. Turns out, doesn't. No big whoop. We will uh, continue on with our project list. So this will be alright for the next little while. Eventually I will have to bump this up into a turbine as well that produces even more power. Um, and I'll probably put the turbine like right here if I don't just move the whole thing. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it for now. This, this program will work with the turbines as well. But when it's all said and done, it was worth a shot. And I'm going to try this. Um, Joe made the biggest of the biggest. No, let's hop over there. I think it's, uh, I think I set a warp for it. Yeah. So this is Joe's reactor station. Uh, that he spent a long time working on and even longer we <laughs> tested that the other night whether or not his redstone setup was working correctly uh, so he's got it set up to as an interesting kind of cover uh, probably not supposed to look like that he's got it set up to um, turn on and off the reactors at certain times with redstone and so this is how he decided to do it and it works very well and originally these puddles of water were to get the reactors kick-started but now they're you know, the, they're all closed systems, so they should be working fine. Um, but basically what he's got going on is a turbine, right? With a massive capacitor bank that is currently has no input or output. So we're going to see something here real quick. And um, he's got this small, it's a nine by nine by three, I think, reactor producing as much heat as he wants it to really. Um, we're gonna do something here and I've talked to him a little bit about this so I'm sure he won't mind. We're gonna go ahead and get out our resonant exchanger and replace the enderium with my ludicrite because this is actually what it's made for. And I'm out. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more blocks or so, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight more blocks. So we'll head home and get it to craft up about eight more. And we'll see what kind of power that puts out. Uh, say 10 and that will cruise through all that it really doesn't take long um, because of how I've got my alloy smelter set up and it's a little cheaty so I'm, I, I do plan on replacing that with a different system that should be quicker um, but we will be making that so let me just wait for this for a second and we'll be right a little bit later we're back and I may have spilled my drink which made me mad because I got it on my new shirt and that was sad so on my new sweater 
and my feet are sticky for some reason after all this. So let's head on back to the reactor facility that Joe and the the purpose of this was that we can have like uh, shared power for some other guys on the server. I guess is what he was doing with this. I don't know. I'm just curious to see how much power it'll put out, to be honest, with this turbine on it. All right, so that should be all of them. So if we come over here, come down, and we turn, see this is, turn this on. And where is the reactor control? I never understood how he had these set up. There it is. And activate this guy. So this will slowly start to build up a production of RF. My concern is that we're gonna build up stuff too fast. Oh no, I don't want this whole thing to do that. I really, I mean, I do want this one to, to push out. I just kind of want to see what RF it can produce. And to be honest, I don't actually think it needs anywhere to go. It's just the redstone signal is going to turn it off probably through. Come on, controller. Oh, I didn't put the glass back in. It's like, why won't you answer me? Boop. There we go. So we'll start that up, bad boy up. Start up the big reactor. This should create steam, pump it into here, and this will slip, will speed up, okay. Jump up and down in speed, I guess. And I'm just gonna watch this and see how much RF comes of it. And then um, once it's fully ticked up, we'll take a look and we'll come back together and work on something else. All right, so I didn't, I mean, I, I'm not the one who set this up. And I'm not sure if this is the most, like I'm actually, I'm 99% sure this is not the most efficient way to be doing this. Um, just because they're going too fast. But this is the Enderium rotor, and at full speed, it's pumping out 15,000, and I've been keeping an eye on this so far, and we're not even up to the, 50, the 1800 yet, and we're already at 14,000, and it fluctuates pretty greatly. We just got to make sure this thing stays on and keeps on pumping, and uh, so I'm still watching it, but that was just something I noticed. Um, they do spin really fast. <laughs> It is interesting, um, you can teleport into these actually and not break them while they're running and it, yeah, well, it's interesting. <laughs> That's about it. All right, we keep an eye on this a little bit. So this is the Enderium one again and I've brought the, uh, the flow rate down to try and bring down the rotor speed and as you can see, getting it away from that peak red zone is giving us quite a bit more power. So just bringing it down to around the 1900 zone is putting out around 23,000, giving us about five or 6,000 more than it was. Um, I'm not really sure where this number is gonna settle. I think we should be okay for around 1,800 right now, but I'm not sure, and this one is still going up. Fairly slowly, I had to beef up the water just because I accidentally broke the water system, the <laughs> closed circuit, and so I had to manually add some water to it. Um, and I'll be right back. All right, so we're back. I've played with the flow rate quite a bit and I'm still trying to even it out. If you let this thing really cap out and get into the red zone, I've seen it as high as 48,000 RF per tick with this setup. Um, and that was just ridiculous, but it it's in the red zone and technically it says they can fail. I don't think that's actually implemented. It, it may be. And so we're just, I'm fiddling around a little bit with getting the, the right flow rate here. Actually, I need it to go up because we're about to dip below. So that's, we're going to start to lose RF here because we're getting into a zone where it's not as efficient. Like it, it's still really good, but we want it to be closer to 1800. And so we just kind of got to play with our flow rates a little bit here. But if you get it right with the Ludocrite, you can you can do some damage like you can do a lot of power here 
Um, and so I'm going to fiddle with that and maybe make a couple of these on my base as well to try and max out the power. Still going down with this flow rate, which I find kind of crazy. Try that, see what happens, and we'll come back uh, in a few minutes again. Well, I actually think that this is kind of broken. Um, it doesn't seem to matter what the flow rate is. I think that the Ludicrite is just too dense of a turbine or something. I don't... Or too, too dense of a rotor because it doesn't seem to matter what the flow rate is. It will bring it down. Um, and so that's kind of... I don't really get that. I mean, maybe it's just the wrong setup here. Um... Like, I'm not, I'm wondering what the most effective, um, this is supposed to be the best coil, but I'm not sure it's really working the way that it's intended to. Like, it seems to be slowing it down. So, um, I'm going to do a few more research, a few more, few more research, a few more moments of research on this, then put his cables back and just see what we come up with. Um, as far as optimizing this, cause I mean, this is, this is ridiculous. So we'll be right back. All right. So we're just pulling out a few things here. I'm going to be done with that reactor for now. It, the Ludicrite really is just a very small increase on Undarium on purpose. And so unless you have the exact right size turbine, I mean, it's really not going to be huge. Um, and so we'll, we'll work on a turbine, but we'll make it so that we can increase the production, like a huge amount. Uh, maybe make just a massive turbine with Enderium or something. But we're working on infusing our Dimlet research. Hopefully, I'm not sure if infusing picks up both the speed and the energy efficiency. Um, a little while back, though, we added a recipe for dimensional shards, which is uh, machine frame, four diamonds, and four iron. Now, this probably is quite inexpensive, uh, and I, it needs to be tweaked a little bit. But the reason that we've done this is because um, we don't want people bogging down the server so much that they um, just buy like, because you have to quarry out new dimensions and we don't want them spawning loads of new dimensions just for the sake of mining dimensional shards. So we decided to throw a recipe on there for the sake of the server. Um, that way they can make the cool dimensions they want and have some fun with that. Um, and so, let's try and get this fully tweaked out here. Come on, come on, come on. There we go, 100%. Uh, come on, clear leg always slows me down. There we go. So let's just head back up here. Plop you down and see what that does for us. All right. So I'm gonna call that an episode. I have got a couple of plans here for our base and our checklists. Um, didn't get a lot done on it, but we did get some. So I've got some ideas for a few builds to sort of spruce up the place. Um, and hopefully you guys do enjoy that. So until next time, I have been Tausty. Hope you enjoyed hanging out here on the Mech Station server at Infinity Labs. Hang up your lab quests on the way out and I'll see you next time. Deuces!